Welcome artists to this soft pastel painting tutorial I'm calling Capturing Autumn's Splendor. We're painting beautiful fall leaves and I'm going to break it down for you in stages. We'll start with a simple sketch followed by a beautiful purple complementary underpainting and I'll teach you how to tackle the seemingly complicated subject by the use of subtle layering. And because beginner artists often get intimidated by so many leaves, I'm going to teach you an easy trick on how to paint shapes and not leaves. It's so much easier and has a beautiful painterly result. All right, let's get started. Let me first mention that this version on the Monet Cafe channel is reduced content. If you would like the full version of this lesson, would you consider supporting this channel for only $5 a month and unlocking hundreds of lessons with more content? Plus, it's a beautiful place to be. I love my Patreon family. The reference image is so beautiful with fall color and these gorgeous trees. It's from unsplash.com. I will have a link to it in the description of this video. Now, because the photo was a little dark, I lightened it up a little bit in Photoshop so I could see a little bit more about what's going on in that foreground. That's why you're going to see two reference images beside my painting surface. And the painting surface is one of my favorite. It's called Pastel Matte. This is a beautiful wine color. I chose it to complement some of the beautiful fall colors. I like to buy it in pads, but they do have individual sheets. I used a lot of these pastels. This is the Sennelier Paris Collection set. It's a half stick set of 120 half sticks. It has such a great assortment of color and values and the quality is exceptional. I used a lot of the reds and the greens. Now this used to be on Amazon, oh, a couple of years ago for 120 something dollars. That's no longer available. But even on Dick Blick's website, 175 is a great price for pastels of this quality. I love this set. I use it all the time. I also chose, not those blues necessarily, but some of those pretty purples were some of the ones that I'm going to use to create an underpainting. I'm going to tell you why I used purples also very soon. This set is called the Mount Vision Thunderstorm Gray set. All right, it's time to begin the sketch. I wanted to take my large piece of pastel mat and make it an 11 by 14 composition. That's a standard size. It's easy to find frames. And I like just taking a mat like this. The outside of an 8 by 10 mat happens to be 11 by 14. So I'm just using a little stick of pastel. It's called a Prismacolor New Pastel. You might notice me making these little marks on my reference image and then coming back and making a mark on my painting surface. These are just little guide marks that help me to get accurate proportions with the sketch. Those two pastels are the Prismacolor New Pastels that I used. These are some of the beautiful bluish purple colors I'm going to use for the underpainting. This first pastel is the Prismacolor new pastel I showed at the very front of those pastel sticks. It's a dark blue. It's actually not available anymore. It's called spruce blue. And I'm just blocking in those large dark areas. Look at the reference image and squint your eyes. You can see down at the bottom is where most of the darks are. I don't want to go too dark too soon, but I wanted to go ahead and block that in. And this stage is called blocking in. We're not thinking about detail here. We're thinking about large shapes. Now I have this pretty, a little bit more magenta purple that I'm using to block in the mass of those red leaves. Now I'm choosing another color. I had tried a color that was too light. This is one of the Mount Vision Thunderstorm Gray pastels. And this one I'm using to block in where I see some of those yellowy green trees a little further away. Those elements are a little lighter than other things in the reference image, you can tell. Now I've got another purple here. I'm getting in some of those distant shadowy areas now. There's some things that aren't quite as dark as the foreground. They're kind of in the middle ground and I also see some more of those little reddish colors sprinkled throughout so I use that purple magenta color for that. Now I did want to go a little darker. Now I'm getting darker finally. Like I said I didn't want to go too dark too soon and this is just a nice dark purple and I'm using it to get those deeper darks down in the foreground in the shadowy areas. And now I'm just going to use that same pastel to very gesturally get in some tree trunks. I'm kind of reestablishing my skin sketch here and I want to keep my trees um, not growing straight up and boring. I want to keep them moving gestural broken lines. And speaking of moving, I'm just going to move around here to encourage you to go ahead and like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please comment. I love to hear from you. And I just started something new. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. It's a way that you can leave a tip for this video to help support this channel and keep the free videos coming. And it happens to go along perfectly with the name of my channel, Monet Cafe Studio. All right. I'm I'm going to show you a little trick here. This pastel matte surface is 
a pastel surface that takes multiple mediums, but many pastel surfaces are very textural and sanded, uh, but because pastel matte is not, it's a little softer. This piece of chamois cloth, you know, they used to market it to dry your cars, is perfect for blending. And I'm just trying to create a soft, moody background before adding more pastel. All right, my underpainting is complete. And now I'm finally going to add some of these warmer colors. Notice I'm not going for those vibrant, punchy oranges and yellows yet. I'm wanting to create more of a neutral base and a little bit of a darker value to layer these beautiful lighter colors on. And this is a kind of a little bit lighter, it has a little bit more saturation. And that's typically how we work with soft pastel painting and other mediums, oil and acrylic. We, because it's an opaque medium, we can layer dark down first and gradually add our lights. Now this is a beautiful, it looks like it's kind of a gray color in my hand, but it's really pretty um, bluish, almost leans a little bluish green. It was perfect for some of those little areas of sky that were peeking through that aren't going to be very light. Now, same concept as the red tree, this green tree, notice I'm going with kind of a neutral green and it's a little darker than the final colors I'm going to add. So just keep that in mind with this subtle layering where I always say painting from the inside out. Think about painting the deepest shadowy parts of the tree first and then gradually getting lighter in values. You can see I carved in, this is a little bit of a darker green here, into some of the areas where I'm seeing um, trees in the distance peeking through some of the other elements. Now if you look at this reference image closely, pull it up on unsplash.com, you'll subtly see some of these colors it's kind of hard to see here but uh, you'll you'll see that I actually am seeing some of these colors and uh, I did want to talk a little bit more about the underpainting can you see that little influence of that purple showing through now the reason I chose purple is because purple is a complement if you look at a color wheel the colors of what's the main focal color here well it's those gorgeous oranges and uh, yellowy colors and if you look opposite to oranges and yellows on the color wheel it's going to be purpley blue colors and that is going to really make these reds stand out and be outstanding and that's what we want now everything i've painted thus far has been very subtle and really soft layering i'm not pressing very hard but now i'm starting to get to where i can give some development to some of these leaves this is a really pretty reddish orange darker value that i laid down first remember the dark to light principle and now i'm finally going to start adding some of these beautiful orange leaves like an icing on a cake uh, keep Keep in mind, the sun doesn't hit those inner elements as much. That's why they're darker, because they're in shadow. They're kind of buried by everything. So we preserve our light values or reserve our light values to place on top. And that's the time when we finally start making some marks that are a little bit more representative of our focal point. And by the way, the focal point in this image is definitely that mass of red in the tree. And I'm actually going to develop it a little more with some little sky holes. I'm going to paint the sky kind of peeking through some areas kind of in a lower left third there um, so now you can see I'm, I'm not painting leaves that's one of the points I wanted to make I'm painting shapes I'm literally squinting my eyes and looking at elements and seeing just how they're shaped with little mark making and gestural marks in the direction of how they're growing so I adding a little bit more green here. I am getting some of my darker greens in. I will gradually add the lighters on top, same principle as the tree with the reds and the oranges. And by the way, I am going to add more yellows and brighter oranges as well. And there was a masses of some things down in the foreground that had that light green as well. Here's the uh, concept I was telling you about. It's called sky holes. It's basically just negative painting. I'm painting, if you look at the reference image, you can see some of the sky is peeking through areas. Up here, of course, in the upper right section, you see a lot of the sky kind of uh, carved down through the um, the tree branches, but then also some in that focal point area I mentioned. Now this greenish color, it's a beautiful color. It's from the Sennelier Paris collection. I'm just keeping it very soft here. I don't want to compete right now with my red tree. And I said this over in my Patreon video as well. 
I really liked the painting at this stage. I often, when I edit my videos, I'm able to look back and go, wow, I really like some of those beginning stages. I do take it to a more, uh, more detailed level, but uh, I love these really soft, moody stages as well. So I'm also carving in some of these lighter greens I'm seeing in the distance, and it's all just mark making. I always say painting is easy once you know a few simple rules. Um, now I'm gonna carve in, um, I kinda lost some of my tree trunks, and uh, I'm just using, it's a really dark green, also a Sennelier pastel, and I'm trying to keep my lines broken and gestural, uh, like uh, thin and thick too. You don't want it just to be the solid line. And uh, in hindsight, I kind of wish I hadn't made some of them, uh, I liked these here at this point, but some of them so thick and, um, and, and as dark. But, but I am still happy with the final painting, which you'll see at the very end of this. But I wanted to share something in case you're a beginner artist. I wanted to share how I would have approached this and did approach it as a beginner pastel artist. I did not know what I was doing. I had no formal art training. I did major in graphic design in school, so I had a little bit of a little bit of drawing, sketching classes, but nothing too serious. So I had to learn everything myself. And I would have approached this reference image literally like a paint by number. I would have seen, oh, here's orange, here's yellow. I didn't know anything about this layering process and how to build a painting in this way so I had to learn it all and that's how this channel started I thought you know what I just learned something let me share it and so gradually this channel Monet Cafe started Monet is one of my favorite artists and cafe was just I thought it'd be a cool name it's like we're all getting together to have a cup of coffee and talk about art so there's a little history for you all right so you can see I'm now finally adding some of those beautiful lighter more vibrant oranges and yellows and um, having some fun with this and really just sprinkling some of this beautiful bright color in areas that I think will enhance the painting in general. Another tip I'll give is to, especially if you get to a stage like this, is take a break. Um, talking about coffee, take a coffee break or a tea break and um, just walk away from the painting for a while because often we keep fiddling with something and working on it and we have a tendency to overwork it. I don't think I walked away at this point, but um, but I again, I really loved some of these early stages in the painting. The great thing you have is you, you, you can watch this whole video and go, okay, I am gonna stop at this point. Um, but now I'm developing some more of these greens. I am adding a little bit more detail, but I'm trying not to get too awfully much detail to compete with the main red orange tree. Carving in a little bit of the lighter greens. I don't want to get anything too light around the edges of the painting because that'll lead the viewer right out. If you have too much detail or high contrast at an edge of the painting, that's usually a bad idea. I did have a little bit down at the lower right. I wanted that little clump of leaves to pull the viewer into the painting, pointing kind of up towards this tree. Now my mark making is getting more precise, a little bit more um, punctuated, and uh, giving some detail in areas I think are going to be an asset for this composition. And very quickly here, you're gonna see me add some of those sky holes. Like I said, it's literally carving in, in just a minute, carving in negatively the spaces of sky that are peeking through. Here we go. And typically with sky holes, we don't wanna go with a white it's gonna look like popcorn we want to go with a value that's a little bit darker than what the sky is up high so it is lighter up here in this area so you can see those little marks they really do draw attention like hey look at me they're very stylized and fun here is the final again let me remind you that the slower version on my Patreon page has a lot more content and also I get to see your work when you're a patron of mine. We have sharing platforms. I give monthly reviews of your work. It's a fun place to be. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please like this video. That thumbs up actually does a lot. It helps YouTube to share this video more often. Subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, God bless and happy painting.